Some of my titles of my messages, I am told, are confrontational. And uh, sometimes I, you know, if you've been around here, if you're, if you're a guest, you may not know this, but if you've been around here a long time, sometimes I, th- I say things that, uh, that some people wonder if, if should be said. And um, I have a title this time, and I, I gave my title to the media team, and they said, well, at least, you know, it, they said it's strong, but it's not as confrontational or as bad as the other ones you've had here lately. So let me see what you think. The title is Too Lazy to Live. Too Lazy to Live. Is that, is that, is that, too, is that too confrontational? Do you, now, now don't clap. Don't point. And don't point at me. Deb, don't point at me. Do you know anybody that's lazy? And don't they just drive you nuts? In fact, people who are Highly motivated versus those that are terribly lazy. That is inevitably trouble waiting to happen. And that's why some of your homes are kind of in turmoil right now. Because somebody's being lazy and somebody is not. And they are not getting along. And I have found over the years that they generally do not get along very well for long. Somebody's got to change or else that's not going to work for a long period of time. So the Bible's wisest men, they, they warned us of the consequences of laziness. Now, I want you to turn me to Proverbs. We're going to look at Proverbs 22, 24, 26. All, all three of those. But, but basically our text right now is in Proverbs 26. Starting at verse 13. This is out of God's word. And here's what it says. A lazy person says there's a ferocious lion out on the road. There's a lion loose in the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so the lazy person turns on his bed. A lazy person puts his fork in his food and wears himself out as he brings it back to his mouth. Have you ever seen anybody like that? That day's too lazy to eat. A lazy person thinks he's wiser than seven people who give a sensible answer. So... Here's what we're going to do in the next few minutes. Our author has spelled out for us at least four ways to identify a lazy individual. If it's you, you're going to find yourself in the midst of all this, and you probably, you're going to be confronted with truth, and you're probably not going to be happy. You're probably going to be mad at me, God and everybody else. So if it's you, you need to change. But if this is somebody you know, then this message is going to explain a lot for you. In fact, you'd be like, uh, those of you that are having to continuously put up with someone who is lazy would probably be like the lady in this story who I read about, that her husband passed away and he was cremated and she had his remains placed in an hourglass. Three weeks after the funeral, she took her late husband in the hourglass over to visit her sister-in-law. And while they were sitting there visiting, she would periodically turn the hourglass over and back and forth and back and forth. And finally the sister said, what are you doing with that hourglass? And she said, well, my husband's remains are in there. And she said, that lazy dog wouldn't work the whole time he was alive. I'm going to make him work now. And some of y'all are like, I know him. I know her. If you are forced to be around a lazy person, you can understand that frustration. It's frustrating. So there's four chapters, uh, four chapters prior to the text. Back, go back to uh, chapter 22. There's a verse that is, that is in there in verse 13. It looks like it's standing all alone, but it, it fits into the subject of what we're talking about today. God's word said, a lazy person says, there are 22, 13, a lazy person says, there's a lion outside, I'll be murdered in the streets. Now you go to Proverbs 26, 13, it says, a lazy person says, there's a ferocious lion out on the road, there's a lion loose in the streets. Now notice the similarities. They're, they're pretty similar there, right? And, 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 but, but further yet, what do they mean? Like, because I'm going to tell you something. If there's a lion outside, I'm not going out there either. And I don't think I'm lazy. I don't think I'm not going out there because I'm lazy. I think I'm not going out there because I'm smart. 
But I, I wanted to dig around in this and figure out what all this was trying to say. And so, you know, while I was doing that, I remembered a story. I don't know if you've, if you've ever heard me tell this or not. You probably have. As long, long as I've been here, I've told them all once and the good ones lots of times. But uh, this one was the first time I thought I had seen a lion. I was about five years old. And dad had taken, with me, taken me with him on a job site. He was building a house and he took me with him. And uh, while he was working over here at Berryville, Arkansas, I was in the front room of that house and I looked out and saw a lion in the front yard. And it freaked me out because, you know, they don't have a lot of lions in Berryville. And so... You know, I freaked out. I go running into dad. I said, there's a lion out in the front yard. There's a lion out in the front yard. He said, there's not no lion out in the front yard. Let me go see. He goes out there and he looks. He said, that's not a lion. That's a dog. I said, I've never seen a dog like that. He said, it's called a St. Bernard. First time when you're a little kid, you see a St. Bernard. You don't, you know, if you're used to seeing puppies and you see a St. Bernard, that's a lion. And so uh, I know now what a St. Bernard is. I understand the difference between a St. Bernard and a lion. But I still tell you this, even at this point in my life, if somebody runs in here and says, there's a lion out front of the church, there's probably not because it's Fayetteville. But secondly, if there is, I'm not going out there. You said, well, you big sissy. Well, it's not because I'm lazy. It's because I'm smart. But in this passage, there was something else going on. Why would they say that in in these two different passages? The same thing. A lazy person says there's a lion outside. There's a lion on the road. There's a lion in the streets. If I go out there, I'll be murdered. It wasn't because there was a lion running around in the streets there either. There wasn't one running around in the streets there either. What was going on? This was a person that just didn't want to go outside or do anything. So they've made up an excuse. The dictionary's definition for the word lazy is this. Not willing to act or work. So if you're taking notes, you're going to write this down. Lazy folks, number one, Always make up excuses for why they can't do something. They're always making excuses. Verse 13, that's there. There's a lion in the road. I can't go out. I might get murdered. People that are lazy are always coming up with some reason why they can't work. I can't go to work today. I can't go to church today. I can't help around the house today. I can't mow the lawn today. And there's always some excuse that they call a reason. Am I right? So I read about uh, the story about the man that went to the doctor and he, he, his uh, energy level had just really dropped for whatever reason. And he didn't feel like doing the honeydew list and he went... To the doctor, and he said, Doc, tell me what's wrong with me. And so the doctor said, well, we'll run some tests on you. We ran some tests, and he came back in. The the, the examination's complete. And he said to the doctor, he said, okay, Doc, I can take it. I just want you to tell me in plain English, what's wrong with me? And the doctor said, well, there's really not anything wrong with you. You're just lazy. And he said, well, give me the medical term so I can tell my wife. Lazy folks are always making up excuses and they're looking for something to justify the reason why they can't do something. Now, if you're married to him or her, don't don't shout amen right now. Just, Just hold it under your breath. The second thing that lazy folks, that can be said about them is found in verse 14. They never move forward. So number one, they always make excuses. Number two, they never move forward. Look at 14. As a door turns on its hinges, so the lazy person turns on his bed. That's saying that's a picture of somebody that's just rolling over in the same spot, but they never make any progress. The situation never gets any better. So this is a person that gets fired over and over again, and it's never their fault. Somebody's always done them wrong, and it's never their fault. 
It's exhausting to be around somebody like this because they never go anywhere in positive progression. Now, they'll go places. They will go, and they'll spend money, and they'll get in trouble. They just don't ever go anywhere good, and they never go anywhere in the right direction to get out of the mess that they're in into a better life because they're too lazy to put forth the effort to have a better life for themselves or for the people around them. Frank Tiger put it this way. He wrote years ago. He said, some people would do anything to be able to do nothing. Amen? So anytime you ask him, what's going on? Well, it's not good. And it's never about them, though. It's never their fault. They've had 75 jobs, but it's always somebody's fault. They've been to 32 churches in the last three years, but it's some pastor's fault. Some churches, some, the church did something, right? Their life is a series of the same old thing of rolling over in the same mess from one direction to the other. They never get out of the mess and go anywhere. They just roll around in it. That's what that verse is saying. You still there? If you are, say amen. Let me go on then. Number three, lazy folks in verse 15 won't even help themselves. Look at that. A lazy person puts his fork in his food. He wears himself out as he brings it back to his mouth. You ever know anybody was too lazy to eat? Like if they couldn't lay their face down and just lay their face in the food. and They were too lazy to even work a fork. Hmm. <laughs> Now, in their line of thinking, it's too much effort to do something that's even going to benefit themselves. So, so here's how this works. Don't nobody shout. A lazy person won't fix themselves something to eat. They'll eat. But somebody else got to fix it. They don't know how. That's what they'll say. I don't know how. You don't know, you don't know how to go in there and open up a jar of peanut butter. And put a knife in there and spread that on a piece of bread. Nope, I don't know how. I can't feed myself. I can eat, but I can't fix it for myself. So Now, they'll eat if you'll fix it for them, but they just starve. They'll just sit around and not even eat if you don't fix it and bring it to them. Don't say amen. Have you ever known somebody like that? Mm. It's not just about food. It's about everything. If their clothes are dirty, they'll just wear them. Because somebody else didn't wash them. Because they weren't about to go in there and wash them themselves. Huh? The floor is nasty. The house is dirty. It's just going to stay that way. Because they might be the one making it that way. But they're not cleaning it. And they're not going to do nothing to help fix the situation. Except talk bad about somebody else for not cleaning it up. I'm on to something now. Yeah, this would be a good chance for y'all to be shouting amen. Everybody's afraid to get, everybody's afraid to get Pentecostal this morning because you got to go back home with them. If you're sick of it looking like it looks, if you're sick of it being like it is, if you're sick of every time you get in the car and don't have any gas in it because they wouldn't stop and put gas in it because that's what you're supposed to do. Hmm. They have no motivation, and they don't even have the social awareness to see that they're the problem here. Like, the, 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 fixing this would benefit them, but they won't do it. If you don't fix it for them, it won't get fixed. Isn't that crazy? Now, for those, those of you that are highly motivated, you don't understand that at all. A lazy person, though, is like, well, my clothes are dirty, so what? It's not my fault. The other person didn't wash them. Didn't make any sense to it. So, you know, I, I read the story about the old mountaineer, him and his wife. They're sitting in the, in the log cabin. It's cold outside. He had some firewood out there that really needed the tarp thrown over it before it got wet. And his wife thought she heard rain hitting the top of the roof. And so she said, Paul, won't you get up and go out there and make sure it's not raining? She said, I think it's raining. You better cover up that firewood. And he sat there for a minute. He looked at the fire. And finally he said, oh, Ma, why don't we just call the dog in and see if he's wet? 
That's how some people think. I'm not even going to get up and go see. That's a good one, Bill. Thank you. Number four. Lazy folks don't even know that they're lazy. Verse 16. A lazy person thinks he's wiser than seven people who give a sensible answer. You ever met them? They know everything. They don't do nothing, but they know everything. (laughs) They think they're smart. A lazy person thinks he's wiser than seven other people who give a sensible answer. Seven other people who say the same thing, it'd be right. But nope. They think they're right. They think they're smart. They think they're just in their way. They don't even know they're lazy. And if they do know, since most of them have been told, they just ignore the truth and just retain that faulty reasoning and that lifestyle. And it's a shame because the people around them suffer because of their willingness and uh, their laziness and unwillingness to acknowledge or change. So their life and the lives of everybody around them is negatively affected just over and over and over. Harshly sometimes due to their refusal to face the truth. They're just, they're not going to do anything, and they think they're right in it. Why don't you go get a job? Government owes me money. Owes me money. Why don't you go get a job? I ain't going to pay no taxes. Pam, I ain't going to pay no taxes. I'd rather just be homeless. I'd rather be homeless than I would go get a job, pay taxes to the government. That's a lazy person's justification. So there was this personnel manager. He was, he was uh, you know, he was going through job applicants, and he came across one. He decided he wasn't going to hire him. So he told him, he said, well, we're not going to hire you because we're overstaffed. Here's what the would-be lazy person who was persistent in getting this job said. The little bit of work I do wouldn't even be noticed. You go ahead and hire me. They'll never even know I'm here. I, won't, I promise I won't do nothing. <laughs> so that list right there describes for us through Scripture a person who's too lazy to live. Now, they're living because everybody's doing everything for them. But they're not living the way that they were designed to live because they're not living up to their potential. God did not create anybody to be lazy. That's not God. Laziness is a choice. You weren't created that way. And so this is, you know, you get angry when I make a statement like this. But I'm going to tell you something. Your lost job or your failed marriage or your children that don't want nothing to do with you are not God's fault don't blame God that you can't keep a job don't blame me don't blame the people that are tolerating your sorry tale sir or ma'am God didn't do any of this this was your decision To decide to take the easy road in life instead of taking a hard look in the mirror and committing to get better. Some people don't want to get better. It's a natural thing for all of us to take the load, the, the road that's the easiest traveled. I'm just, and it doesn't make you lazy just because you use an elevator every once in a while. But I'm telling you, there's some people that if they go into a building that the elevator or the or the escalator's not working, they're like, we're gonna have to come back a different day. That's on the second floor. You think I'm going up steps to a second floor? There's probably 10 or 12 steps right there. We're going to have to come back. We'll call them on, see if they've got that elevator fixed. The best thing for us is to climb every stair we encounter. Huh? Walk as often as you can. Move as much as you can because your body was not designed to be sedentary. Your body won't last. It won't last for you. 
you won't live as long and you won't be as healthy if you don't get moving, if you don't stay moving, if you don't work hard. Well, I've reached a point in my life where I don't have to do that anymore, Pastor. Well, if you don't have to, do it just because you want to. Do it because you want to live. Do it because you want to you be better. Do it because you want to be healthy. God isn't the problem here. You're just too lazy to live. I'm going to close with one more passage of Scripture. I didn't preach long today because I knew we couldn't take it. Proverbs 24, verse 30 through 34, God's Word. The writer said, I passed by a lazy person's field. Now, symbolically, that could be talking about looking, taking a look at another person's life. I passed by a lazy person's life. The vineyard belonging to a person without sense. I saw that it was all overgrown with thistles. The ground was covered with weeds. Guess what that means? This lazy person's life had no fruit. Just thistles. And its stone fence was torn down. There's no security. When I observed this, I took it to heart. And I saw it and I learned my lesson. Just a little sleep. Just a little slumber. Just a little nap. Now, he's not saying you can't go to sleep and you can't take a nap. He's saying if that's all you do. If you're that person that says, I'll do it tomorrow. Always going to do it tomorrow. When are you going to fix that? I'll do it tomorrow. When are you going to do this? I'll do it some other time. I'm not going to do it right now. I don't want to right now. Just a little sleep, just a little slumber, just a little nap. And he says, and then your poverty will come like a drifter and your need will come like a bandit. What's he trying to say there? Basically, here's what that means. If you remain lazy, you're going to destroy your whole life. You're going to lose everything and you're going to lose everyone that you love. That's what's going to happen. Because you were not put on this planet to just sit around and let everybody else do things. Mm. Well, what am I supposed to do? Get up. Instead of getting angry at me and God and everybody else, get up. Get going before it's too late, before everything's too gone. Or everything's gone. And here's the thing about this word. You know if it's for you. I don't know who it's for. I truly don't. I'm just putting it out there because you said, well, why this particular word? Why don't you preach something else? Because the whole word is pros- profitable. Everything in the word is profitable. So sometimes I talk about things you like. Some things I talk, sometimes I talk about things you don't. But they're all in the word. They're all necessary. So this isn't one that we wave hankies and shout and dance around, come to the altar, and uh, that's not one of them. Maybe next week. I like those kind better myself. They're a whole lot more fun to preach. But this is profitable. This is good. We need this. And in fact, you know, Lord, I, I'm in my office before I, before I came over and I'm praying. I'm saying, Lord, I know that every word is not for everybody, all of it, but there's something in every word for everybody. So what about this is for me? So here I am. I'm up here teaching and preaching, but it's coming here too just like it's going there. God examined my heart. Is there, do I have lazy ways? I know that in some ways I'm not for sure. I'm driven. But in other are there some ways, Lord? Are there ways? And show me the ways where I am so I'll stop being. Because I don't want there to be people out there that say it behind my back. He is so stinking lazy. I don't want that. I don't want that to be my legacy. I don't want it to be your legacy. That's why I'm giving you this word. You know who it's for. You know if it's for you. I don't. I'm just putting it out there. But here's a scoop. Now it's between me and the Lord. It's between you and the Lord. He has given us the truth. He has shown us the word. And now there it is. There it is. And so we can deal with it. So, you know, before the, before the services in the green room, the the... Victor always comes in, the worship team always say, what are we going to do at the end of the service? And I usually tell them, we need a full band. We don't need a band. We're going to come. Today, I told him, I don't expect much. You know, basically, I was like, uh. you know, Isaac was in there. Isaac's the floor director today. He said, we going, we going, what's the, what's, what's the cue for the, what's the cue for it? Well, here's the cue. I tell you what the cue is, but why well, are we going to have a full band? I said, Victor, I don't really think we're going to need a band. I don't expect it's going to be one of them days where a lot of folks come running down to the altar. It's too far to go, right? <laughs> Can I just sit here and pray? Uh, 
<laughs> if, you, if you're here with us on the live stream and it's because you had to be at work or because you, you're on vacation, you just couldn't be here, I understand. But if you're there because you're lazy, mm, you, could, you couldn't even get in your car. Don't, don't tell me you're on the live stream sitting over here on Cheryl Avenue. Don't t- I don't want to know it. I, I just like, yeah, I've heard that. I, I don't come to church much anymore, Pastor. I just like getting up late and keeping my pajamas on, and we just flip on the TV, and we listen to you every Sunday, and it ain't doing squat because you're not involved, you're not participating, you're not around, you're not in the church, you're not serving, you're not giving, you're not doing you just turning me on, and when I'm done, you'll flip it on over to Andy Griffith. Except today, it'd be, it's football, guys. it just go straight to football. Come on, folks. Let's not be lazy. Let's not be lazy. Fail not the assembling of yourself together, one with another. The Scripture warns us against that. Men, take the lead. Take the lead. Get up. Don't send your wife and kids to church. I'm talking to men that don't do that, but I'm also talking to some that do. Don't send them to church. You get up. You be the man that says, this is for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord, and here's how we're going to do it. Everybody, we're going to church today. Tomorrow, we're going to get up. We're all going to go to school, and we're all going to go to work. This is how we're going to lead our families. Proverbs 31 tells us about what the women ought to look like. Every man needs a Proverbs 31 wife. Amen. She's working hard. She's representing the family. She's industrious. I mean, we got all that. This is what God intends for all of us. That all of us would be productive. Because the busier and the, the, I'm telling you, the busier you are, the healthier you're going to be, the longer you're going to live. If you sit down, if you just sit down and stay there, You won't be with us long because your body is not designed to do that. You can pray all you want. You can go get on more medication. That's what people do. They sit down and then they get on all kind of medication. Then this one does this, this one does that, that one does that, that one. They just medicate themselves till they die. Or you could get up, eat right, work out, stay healthy, keep moving. Right? I know I'm not going to have a lot of friends after this. I'm just telling you the truth. Get up and get going, and you, and you live a lot longer and be a lot healthier and be a lot happier. And God will bless your life because this is what God put us here to do. If you're on this planet, I know we slow down. I get it. I get it. I know we slow down. I'm not as fast as I used to be. In fact, I have, I have noticed that old Toby Keith song. Some of y'all remember. I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't lift it as much and as long and as many times, as I, but I can still lift it if I have to. And I want you to stay in that kind of a place where they, you are busy and you are productive and you are blessed. Amen? Lord, I thank you for your word. I love that this is my family, Lord. This is why I share these things with them. I don't do it to make them mad. I do it to make them, make them strong. Lord, we tell the truth because we want, to, we want to get to heaven. We want to get there the right way. We want to get there strong. We want to stand before you. We want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. This is what we want to hear. And I don't want anybody that was within my, within my sphere of influence to miss that. I want us to be there. And so, Lord, we do this every week. Take a chance on some being happy and some being sad and some being excited and some being mad. We do it every time, Lord. It's because we all want to get there. We want to get there. We want to get there. That's all that matters. We want to get there. And we want to live this life the way you intended for us to do that abundantly, more abundantly. So I pray today that this word, along with all the rest of them, will find its root in our heart and that you will help us as we examine ourselves that every place that we are in need of change. We will change. I pray for those who are here, those who are listening, those who will hear this later this week. Wherever this word goes forth, I pray, God, that it will find fertile soil. Even those that are already working hard, encourage us to keep going. 
Lord, those who are, sometimes laziness looks like laziness, but it's really depression. And I pray for healing in those situations. But those, God, that are just struggling to get motivated, they're just struggling to do, they, maybe they're lazy because they don't know where, they don't have anywhere to go, they don't have nothing to do. Give them something to do, God. Put something in their heart. If we're on the planet, we're supposed to be here. Give them something, Lord, to get up and excited about every day. Get us moving, get us working, get us going. And help none of us, Lord, to squander away the people and the resources and the goodness that you have entrusted to us. Don't let us squander that away by just sitting and letting it go away. I pray that we wouldn't be angered by the word today, but Lord, that we would be that we would be convicted in every place that we need it, and that we would be open and we'll receive that word, we'll act upon that word, we'll we'll repent for that, and that you will show us and guide us and direct us. Lord, we'll walk out of here instead of being mad, we'll walk out of here with new motivation. I'm gonna get up. I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to do something. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Minister to us now, Lord. As we grapple with your word, I want you just for a minute or two, just sit there and just with your eyes closed, meditate on the word, listen to the Holy Spirit, let him just work through you, examining your heart, and just ask him, God, are there any ways in me, are there any ways in me that look lazy? Would you change me? Would you show me what you want me to do, and would you change me so that I will not be that way any longer.